Andrew Feustel, F-E-U-S-T-E-L. Okay. Uh, do you prefer to be called Andrew? Uh, you can call me Drew. Drew. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, you're a returning astronaut from the uh, Hubble mission, is that correct? I mean, That's right. Yep. STS-125. And you're coming back to, back to your digs here at Purdue. Uh, is this for the first time since the mission, or have you been back? Uh, this is the first time since the mission. Uh, my wife and I were here with our kids in uh, 2007 for the dedication of the uh, Neil Armstrong Engineering Building. And uh, our mission flew last year, uh, or well, I guess this year, in May of this year. And uh, we landed uh, May 24th. And uh, so this is our first opportunity to come back to the university and share the uh, stories about the mission and uh, you know, talk to the people that supported us when we were students and uh, got me ready to go uh, to continue my career and, and head off into space. Excellent. Um, and uh, I was going to ask you, what do you think? I mean, you've, you've only had a little bit to, to kind of take in these two paintings, but what do you think of yeah, the images are spectacular. It's really neat to see the uh, the artwork and the colors, and uh, it's neat to read the description of the images, sort of describing the era, the Apollo era that they talk about. And uh, of course, uh, this image has Grissom, Chaffee, and White. And uh, of course, Grissom and uh, Chaffee were both uh, Purdue graduates. And uh, so it's neat that that those images are captured here, and, and as part of the celebration, I believe, of the uh, of the museum here, you know, looking for important images uh, and and capturing. Uh, artwork uh, that that has some uh, meaning to the area uh, and also you know now with uh, you know Purdue has always been a great uh, cradle for astronauts and with uh, uh, President uh, Cordova here uh, she has great ties to NASA as well so it's it's nice to sort of bring that all together and uh, this is a great way to do it. Um, and uh, what is this what brought you out here to the museum today? It, it is. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Uh, Bill Hines uh, let me know that these, uh, these uh, paintings were here and uh, these etchings were here and I think uh, he and his wife had something to do with uh, helping to get them here and uh, so we thought it would be a great opportunity and appropriate with, uh, with me here on campus talking to the Earth, Earth and Atmospheric Sciences Department that uh, he was a part of uh, and it was a part of my early career to come out and also now see these images that that helped tie together the whole space theme with, with NASA and now the connection with uh, Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. Cool. And you're the only graduate from that school. From so, so far. So far. That's right. Space. So far. Maybe there will be more. You know, maybe it's a motivation for uh, students to follow on and, uh, and do the same sorts of things. And uh, if we actually return to, to the moon uh, as is planned by NASA, then uh, we're going to need more geologists and geoscientists. So uh, I hope not to be the only one because uh, I, I can't, certainly can't do it alone. And uh, we need all the support we can get. Uh, the last man, one of the last men that uh, stepped foot on the moon was a geologist, uh, Jack Schmidt. And uh, so uh, we hope he uh, won't be the last. So. Neat. Um, now you're, you're going to be speaking at Purdue, is that That's uh, right. Tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow evening, I believe it's at 5.30 at Fowler Hall. I'll be giving a presentation uh, about the mission. Well, what's your main message or what point would you like to get? Uh, really, I'm just here to share the story of the mission. and. Uh, um, I'll be showing some slides, uh, photos that were taking, uh, taken during the mission of uh, the work that we did on Hubble and uh, video as well that, that sort of help, helps to uh, bring people into the crew cabin and let them understand what the mission was like. And uh, we're also here just to try to motivate people and uh, let them know what we're doing in the, in the human space program and uh, try to get people excited about uh, continuing to support those efforts and uh, you know, keep, keep humans exploring uh, outer space. Speaking about excitement about space, I mean, uh, it sounded like you were pretty excited to do your first space walk. If I'm wrong about this, stop me, but I remember reading somewhere in some article, maybe the AP, that you let out a kind of like a woo-hoo. A woo-hoo, that's right. Yeah, the woo-hoo came out. Uh, uh, I was very excited about the mission. Uh, this was my first space flight. And uh, you know, one of the woohoos. There were several of them, but the first one was uh, on the completion of the. My first objective for the mission was to remove a uh, an instrument called the Wide Field Planetary Camera Two, and to replace it with a 132 million dollar Wide Field Planetary Camera Three. As it turns out, the uh, the bolt that I was supposed to release on my first spacewalk, my first objective for the mission, the first thing they actually asked me to do uh, was stuck. And so I spent about 40 minutes working with the ground control teams and the other uh, crew members to find ways to release that bolt. And when it finally did come loose, uh, and then that which allowed us to complete that task for the mission, uh, that's when one of the woohoos came, and that was a very exciting moment for all of us.
Well, you could, except that the telescope's quite large and heavy and uh, is actually physically attached to the, uh, the uh, uh, space shuttle. Okay, the so Hubble Space so Telescope is about the size of a school bus, uh, and so it's quite large, and it was, it was well fixed to the, uh, to the shuttle. So uh, the only thing that was going to turn when I turned that bolt was me. Uh, but fortunately, I was attached to the, uh, the Canadian robotic arm that's uh, part of the space shuttle, uh, which allowed me to stay in place, and then the telescope stayed in place, and all I had to do was push hard. And, Try to get that bolt free. I see. Forgive uh, an idiot. Oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what's been more difficult, doing the spacewalk or all the interviews when you get back? To <laughs> uh, I think uh, doing the interviews is always harder than any of the space work I ever did, yeah. <laughs> it's always a challenge. You certainly have a lot of stories. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have some good stories. Yeah, what happens in space stays in space. So I don't tell you all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask you one more uh, kind of, I don't know if it's boring or not for you, but uh, you were the, placing one of the cameras, was this one camera damaged or were you just doing an upgrade? Actually, you know, that's a good question. Uh, the camera that we replaced was the only functional instrument on the telescope. So we went up there to replace not only that instrument but many others, but uh, it was somewhat ironic that um, our first objective was to actually replace the only functional scientific instrument on the telescope. You'd think we would just go replace the ones that were broken, but we did those and more. Yeah, so it was an upgrade as well as a repair mission. Okay, can that see farther then, or is it? Uh, is, or it ha yeah, it has higher resolution capability, has higher uh, data throughput capability. So essentially, the telescope is a hundred times more capable than it was, and that that can be uh, um, quantified in terms of the data throughput and also its ability to um, uh, to point accurately at targets in outer space and uh, monitor them for long periods of time um, and still take in uh, vast amounts of data. So it's much more efficient than it ever has been. In fact, Hubble is operating now with the repairs that we did at full capacity uh, for the first time ever in uh, its 19 years of existence. It's uh, great to be back in uh, West Lafayette and Lafayette as well, and nice to see how things have changed and uh, also that uh, many things have stayed the same. So it's, uh, it's a nice uh, uh, you know, welcome home feeling every time we're back in town. So just, we're just happy to be here and share the stories. Well, I'm going to ask one more question. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I just, I just Go ahead. in my head. Is it, is it nice to have solid ground under your feet, or do you have uh, a different perspective on it now that you've been It, it is. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, looking at the Earth from space gives you a longing to be on the Earth. It really does. And you feel uh, somewhat separated when you're uh, floating around the planet 350 miles away in a, uh, a small uh, spacecraft. Uh, seeing the beauty of the Earth, you know, gives you a perspective of how how small the world is, um, how vast the space is that we exist in, but uh, also how precious it is and uh, how important it is to keep it, uh, keep it going and, uh, and protect it.